the autumnal equinox each year, the weather becomes cooler in Taiwan. Wind blowing from the south becomes the northeastern monsoon. And migratory birds flying south for the winter start arriving in South Taiwan's coastal regions. The abundant natural resources in the estuary wetlands along the flat western coastline of Taiwan provide an ideal habitat for various species, including the rare and endangered migratory species, the black-faced spoonbill. The gentle ebb and flow of the tides along the Tsungwen River estuary in Tainan nurture large numbers of fish, shrimp, and mollusks, making the Chigu wetlands the main wintering site of this precious spoonbill. On November 1st, 2002, the Council of Agriculture designated 300 hectares of habitat at the Tsungwen River estuary as the Blackface Spoonbill Reserve. The other 334 hectares of fish ponds on the east side were also made a major wildlife habitat. This will ensure that the spoonbills have a safe home while wintering in Taiwan. The black-faced spoonbill is the smallest and rarest of the six Palatiae species within the family Threscornidia, which belongs to the Siconiformis. It is a wader, and with only 1,200 individuals surviving in the world, is a critically endangered species. It is found only in East Asia. The dark, bare, patched area is distinct in front of the eyes of the black-faced spoonbill with its long black bill that expands at the tip and is shaped as a spoon. It's about 76 centimeters in total length and around 40 centimeters in height. Its wingspan can reach 140 centimeters while flying. Its unique foraging behavior has led local fishermen to nickname the bird La Bue. At dawn in the reserve, spoonbills returning from the fish ponds gather together in a line. With heads and long bills tucked into the feathers on their back, they rest either on one leg or both. The black-faced spoonbill sleeps in the middle of the reserve for most of the day. On the viewing platform, volunteers from the Wild Bird Society are installing this telescope to count the birds in this group. The black-faced spoonbill often rests on just one leg. Perhaps one of the reasons for this is that they want to conserve body heat during cold spells. Black-faced spoonbills share their habitat with our data species, herons and egrets. Our data are extremely nervous birds. They take flight immediately at the slightest rustling of the reeds, and the black-faced spoonbills always keep alert after them. While flying, the black-faced spoonbills stretch out their necks, unlike herons, which always contract their necks. When they are airborne, researchers can see the color of the primary feathers to distinguish the adults from subadults. Birds with pure white primary feathers are adult, while those with blackish-brown tips are subadult or immature. Mm -hmm. 
This floating feather came from a sub-adult individual. As well as plumage color, mandible color betrays the bird's approximate age. Those with smooth mandibles are immature or sub-adults. As they mature into adults, the mandible becomes black and mandible bars appear. The fish ponds north of the reserve are used mainly to rear clams. Clam breeders also raise milkfish in the ponds to clean the algae on the ground that hinders the growth of clams in the sandy bottoms of the pond. After the clam harvest, the fishermen usually let the ponds dry up. The small fish and shrimp are forced into a small area. Large numbers of great egrets, little egrets, and black-faced spoonbills take advantage of the feast on offer. When foraging, they wade quickly through shallow water their half-open bills thrust into the water, bodies twisting as they swing their heads from side to side to feel for and gulp down fish. Black-faced spoonbills groom each other. Next to foraging, grooming is the second most important activity of the wintering spoonbills. When bathing, they submerge their body in the water and splash with their outstretched wings. They use their bills to groom the feathers clean. Fleas and other small parasites are washed away in the water. After bathing and grooming, they use their bills to rearrange their feathers. The spoonbills spread their wings and beat the air. Sometimes they hop around to dry their feathers more quickly. These graceful movements have led them to be nicknamed black-faced dancers by some bird watchers. During the day, apart from resting, some birds play with other members of the group. They hold a stalk or an old feather in their bills, playing tug of war with each other and learning the skills they will need to manipulate grasses to build a nest when the time comes for them to breed. Some black-faced spoonbills gather around the gray mangroves and vie for the highest position. This behavior is seldom seen in other Ardidae species. The spoonbills do not stay in one fixed place within the habitat, but follow the ebb and flow of the tide to find the shallows. When shifting position, most of them fly to the new spot, while others wade. This movement gives researchers a good opportunity to conduct population surveys. As the north wind gets stronger and the temperature falls, 
the black-faced spoonbills shelter beside the embankment to the north of the reserve. Although it is cold, this is the best time to watch the birds. After winter, the days gradually lengthen and the weather slowly gets warmer. Beautiful yellow-orange breeding plumage appears on the adult bird necks and heads. Juveniles and sub-adults remain snowy white all over. From February through to April or May, the black-faced spoonbills gradually spread out of the reserve. Up to 300 spoonbills have been known to gather at the Sucho Reserve in Tainan City at this time. Most of them are juveniles or sub-adults. In recent years, a population of around 40 sub-adults has been seen up until May at the disused salt pans at Dingshan Village in Chigu. These youngsters are staging before their northward journey. By mid-June, most of the black-faced spoonbills have already left their winter home of more than six months. Taiwan can be said to be their second home. From late February to early March, the first group of adult black-faced spoonbills began their arduous journey north to breed, their feathers glossy with health. one bird marked with satellite transmitters, nicknamed Peepy, was followed over a period of 17 days on its migration route to the breeding site at Haijodo. Known breeding sites are concentrated mainly on the small uninhabited offshore islands of North and South Korea around the 38th North Latitude. Because of military restrictions at the demilitarized zone, it is extremely difficult to visit the islands for research. The only known breeding site in China is a small uninhabited island off the Liaodong Peninsula, known as Xingren Duo. Named on account of its shape, the island is 0.26 square kilometers in area and 42.6 meters above sea level. According to local fishermen, around April 20th each year, several black-faced spoonbills arrive in the area and then fly away. Each year, two or three breeding pairs remain on the island to reproduce. The birds make their nests on the cliff edge or in the fork of trees growing on the island cliffs. The nests are around 40 centimeters in diameter. The female lays two or three eggs, which are about the same size as a duck egg. The eggs are white with mottled markings. The parents sit on the eggs for the 23 to 26 days it takes to hatch. While one guards the chicks, the other goes out to find food.
The parents return to the nest with food twice a day, according to the tide. They regurgitate the half-digested liquid mixture of fish pieces from their gorge and feed it into the chicks' mouths. During the hatching period and while the chicks grow up, sudden attacks from herring gulls and peregrine falcons present a serious threat to the eggs and chicks. These two species are the natural enemy of black-faced spoonbills while breeding. The parents continue to feed and care for their chicks for 35 to 40 days. Then the chicks leave the nest but stay close to the parents. At around seven weeks old, the young can fly. And three months after being hatched, they are ready to accompany their parents on the southward migration. By mid-August, all the birds have left the island to begin yet another long journey to pass the winter. The timing for the migration depends on the wind direction and ocean currents. Once the northwestern monsoon begins, the spoonbills flock together and fly south. When the wind starts blowing from the south and the weather starts getting warmer the following year, they make the journey back to their breeding sites. According to intensive studies, black-faced spoonbills take two distinct migration routes. One takes them from their breeding grounds in North and South Korea, south along the coast of China to Hong Kong, Macau, Taiwan, and even as far as Vietnam. The other route goes from North and South Korea via the south of the Korean Peninsula to Japan, Okinawa, and Taiwan. In recent years, sightings of small groups of wintering black-faced spoonbills have been recorded in the northern Philippines and Thailand. From December 9, 2002 to January 3, 2003, a total of four waves of avian botulism struck the black-faced spoonbill population at Sunwen River Estuary, north to the black-faced spoonbill reserve. Avian botulism bacteria are widely distributed in organic soils. As the bacteria multiply and die, a toxin is released, which affects the nervous system, causing muscle paralysis. Infected birds are unable to fly or hold their heads erect. They become unsteady on their feet and breathe rapidly with open bills. During the outbreak, a total of 73 birds died. 17 others were rescued by conservationists and experts at the Council of Agriculture, Tainan County Government, the Endemic Species Research Institute, and Tainan Shen Livestock Disease Control Center. They were released back into the wild after assessment. Although the outbreak of avian botulism affected the already precarious spoonbill numbers, it also provided an opportunity to strengthen overall conservation measures. On February 18, 2003, the first batch of 15 recovered black-faced spoonbills were successfully released into the reserve to join the rest of the population. The second release of two recovered spoonbills took place on March 16th. On April 1st, 2003, the Council of Agriculture, the Tainan County Government, the Endemic Species Research Institute, and the Biological Society of China organized the International Symposium on Black-Faced Spoonbill Conservation. The meeting focused on rescue, medical care, and release into the wild of spoonbills affected by the botulism and provided concrete suggestions for improving habitat management. The following autumn, 16 of the 17 recovered spoonbills returned to the reserve at Tainan. The exception was one which flew all the way to southern Japan.
It is still unclear whether the outbreak of avian botulism will affect the future population of the blackface spoonbill. However, people should know that it is important to offer a healthier habitat for them. Furthermore, intensive media reports on the situation increased public awareness of the dire need for blackface spoonbill conservation. In the past, the concept of conservation was not as popular as it is now in Taiwan. Blackface spoonbills were hunted and killed. Up until recently, human interference and injury were still evident. However, in spite of the conservation efforts of local wild bird societies and ornithologists, blackface spoonbills are still threatened by human development and survival pressure due to the changes in the status of nearby fish ponds. The conservation of blackface spoonbills is an international matter and Taiwan must do its best to continue resolving this important issue. Hemipiru是从画色保护区之后，那么大概面临一个比较严重的问题。那么就是每年在黑面皮鹭要呃离开了最后一个半夜左右呢，因为通常是比较旱季哈，所以呃当地的这个水咸分比较高，这以后的资